So these negative biases, it comes from a self-defense mechanism our brain has. Okay. It's we're trying to prevent ourselves from being harmed. And so it stimulates this, what I would call no better term for it other than anxiety. you you guys do this too you do it in your own way and i'll leave that to you to analyze how you use these biases to your disadvantage i'll tell you one way that you do it is you you guys will oftentimes maybe not you guys but guys in red pill spaces do this when i get on rule zero tomorrow there's going to be more guys that do this than anyone that watches me and that's they get into a negative confirmation bias about women in general all right you, you take these things that you might know about women and then you look at it through the lens of a negative bias. And you have all, we have all kinds of fun sayings and things that we do to kind of more or less degrade female uh, nature and females in general so that we don't become too emotionally invested, which brings to kind of a final point is anxiety. So these negative biases... It comes from a self-defense mechanism our brain has. Okay. It's we're trying to prevent ourselves from being harmed. And so it stimulates this, what I would call no better term for it other than anxiety. And if she gets her anxiety stimulated, she does this. If you do it, you're doing this because anxiety does not seek truth out. Anxiety is a great the great what's a word for something that tricks you and fools you you know i might i'm a way too chad to think of cool things right like that i need to, it's it's low-key i don't know man but you know what i mean it's 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 the it's it's the great uh liar really is anxiety anxiety is a liar it's not truthful but it feels true okay the great you know it deceptive force in your brain is anxiety because what happens is, is it is out to confirm itself. That's how your brain, which is designed, your brain is designed to defend itself. Your brain is designed for survival. Your brain is not designed to find the truth. It's designed to find what's right for its own sense. So you can survive and procreate. That's the design of your brain. Okay. Your human side wants to find the truth of things. But the brain is designed to keep you from harming yourself, keep you out of harm, keep, allow, allow you to survive, right? Okay, that's what your brain's designed to do. So if you avoid women or avoid healthy relationships and stuff, then that means that you're not going to be hurt by a woman. You see what I mean? And that's the basics of it. And when she is operating on her negative biases, she is protecting herself most likely from mating with the wrong person or being with a inferior man or being with a man who is toxic or bad for her. She thinks she's protecting herself from that by confirming her negative bias with everything you do. But here's the thing. You're no different. I mean, maybe you're an improved version of yourself even, but you're not different than when she was, head over heels in love with you. She's not different than when you are excited about her. The only thing that's different is you and your biases and how you see the other person. So here's some quick tips on what to do about it. First of all is selection. Be a positive person and be with a positive person. There's ways of thinking of things, right? And we can take something and we can think excessively negative stuff and limiting ways of looking at stuff. Or we can think of ways we can use this to our advantage. And I don't mean positive thinking where you lie to yourself and, you know, hide in a corner and just give yourself affirmations that don't make any sense. All right. This isn't the, uh, the secret or whatever. Okay. We're dealing with practical stuff here. But you ask yourself when you have some thoughts about your partner, 
what's going on. Is this useful right now? All right. Is, is what is what I'm about to say or do or my thoughts about this person? Is it real? Is it useful? All right. Ask yourself that question. And, and how can I take what I think I'm seeing and what's the reality? How can I take it to have positive action to get what I want from this relationship? So that's in general, that's not even a skill. That's just something you need to, to develop as a natural thing that you do all the time, not just in your relationships, but in general. I have a negative thought or I have a positive thought, whatever. Is it useful? How can I use this to my advantage? That's positive thinking. Being a positive person, that is a prereq. If you're with a woman who is negative all the time about stuff, eventually she's going to be negative to you about stuff. And now you're going to have an uphill battle maintaining frame with that woman. And it's not going to be your skills. It's going to be your capabilities. Okay. She may not be able to do it. May not be able to have a healthy relationship because she is not a positive person. And it's not tested when things are good, by the way. It's tested when there's, she's not getting her way. She doesn't get her way when adversity happens, when a problem arises between you two. Is she thinking in a positive way and trying to work things out in a good way with you and be supportive and loving? Or is she being a complete soul and controlling and trying to move things in the other direction? So that's first thing. And you got to be that person too to get that person. Second thing is being with a forgiving person because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. And so is she, right? So you have to be a person who's capable of forgiveness. All right. This doesn't mean hurt yourself. This doesn't mean not look at things objectively. Okay. Again, how can I use this? What's going on here? But if you're able to move forward in a relationship with somebody after being injured, um, just not whether you're able to, but whether it makes sense that anybody could be able to, then that means that you should be able to. And that means you work towards that and you forgive a person for the things that they may have done to you. And you work towards, you know, having a better life together. When you run into problems, that's what you do. And if she's not the person who does that, and if she's a person who holds grudges, tries to punish other people, so on and so forth, or if you're that person, right, then it's probably not going to work out. And so that's something you need to change in yourself. And that's some, something you need to look for when you pick somebody. And a big part of that is removing your trauma. If you got trauma and damage weighing you down, you're going to carry that into your relationships. And it's going to make it very difficult for you to forgive things that she might do and make it very difficult for you to move out of a negative confirmation bias. Third thing is to challenge yourself and your beliefs always. Do what's called a cognitive challenge, which is I take a situation, you take that negative belief or thought and you challenge it. You say, okay, you know, she did this. What's the worst case scenario with the things she just said? She's disrespectful. She's an a-hole. She doesn't see me as her best option. She's cheating on me. She's doing this. Whatever it may be, within the realm of reality, what is the worst case? And then you ask yourself, what is the best case? What is the opposite of this negative thing? What is the opposite? If, if the opposite could be true, what would that be? And what that gives you is what we call when we're at the shooting range, a left and right limit. So now you've removed the unknown. You know that the possibility of the meaning and everything behind, let's say, this perceived offense or this negative thought, you know that this is the limit it exists in. This helps to remove the anxiety that forces you to have a negative bias because anxiety is based on what's unknown. When you know the danger as well as the, the possibility, right, the opposite of the danger, now you have a left and right limit. It can't get any worse or any better than what's in this limit. So now you can work with something. And from there, that allows you to now have a, to remove just that, positive or negative confirmation bias, usually negative confirmation bias, and just challenge the belief and try to look at the evidence 
and then say, here's where maybe I think that is. And to be comfortable also saying, but maybe I don't know. And maybe I need to observe more behavior because I really don't know. Or maybe I need to ask some questions or have a discussion and communicate with my partner. But that's going to remove that, that anxiety. And if you can do that belief challenge, which I include in the mindset course, if you haven't gotten that yet, um, that's on the website and it's included in the mastermind program if you're in the right tier. And then the last thing is the act with intention. If you want to be with this chick, act like it. All right. And start to actively move your negative thoughts into positive possibilities, not in a way to remove the idea of um, reality or objectivity, but you move it to those possibilities because you want to, you want to take what is real and when you want to have the outcome independence to say, here's where I think reality is. And then you want to ask yourself, how can I use this? What can I do about this? to be with this person, to have the good, loving, happy relationship that I want. Okay, that's moving and operating with intention versus being a victim of your own behavior and her bull too, all right? And so move with intention. So if you can do those things, be a positive person and pick a positive person. Be a forgiving person and pick a forgiving person. Challenge yourselves in your beliefs always. When, you, when the negative biases crop up and then act with intention, if you can do those four things, you're going to help yourself greatly. And now you are actually in charge of your relationship. And hopefully she can do some of these things too to be in charge of herself and her emotions towards you versus just being a victim by them, right? Being a victim of them and letting attraction and then unattraction getting together and breakups just happen due to biases and things going on and things wrong with you, right? Breakups happen. Staying together happens. Getting together happens. Having great relationships happened. Not having great relationships happen. Well, you want to do those things with your intentions. You want to be intentional. You want to see the truth not just see things through the lens of your perceptions and your biases, right? Because you can be the smartest person in the world, but if you can't get rid of those biases and if you're too egotistical or arrogant to think that maybe your perceptions need to be challenged, I got news for you. You're not going to do too well. <laughs>